Expedition Next Light 33. Expedition's a new brand for us here at Lancaster Archery. Next Light 33, unique material, super light bow. We're gonna tell you all about it. All right, Next Light 33, we're gonna run through some quick specs for you. This is a 33 inch axle to axle bow. You're gonna have a brace height of just under six and a half inches. Uh, peak draw weights available are gonna be 50, 60, 65, 70, and 80 pounds. Your draw length range on this bow is gonna be from 24 and a half to 31 inches. That is gonna be in quarter inch increments. There will be a rotating mod, but there's three rotating mods to get to cover that complete uh, draw length adjustment there. So in other words, you're not gonna have one module that goes from 24 and a half to 31 inches. That would kind of kill some of the efficiency at the lower end. So Expedition divided it over three modules just to give you better performance uh, at all of the draw length ranges. IBO speed rating of this bow is gonna be up to 330 feet per second. We will of course do our own speed test of that. And the uh, listed weight of this bow is three and three quarters pounds. We're gonna to go to our shipping scale to see what we get. All right, next light 33. Remember the spec uh, weight of this is three and three quarters pounds. We get 3.945, 3.95 is kind of oscillating between the two. Um, but remember, this is a 33 inch axle to axle bow. For it to be sub four pounds, that's ridiculous. But that is because of this Magnite special material. We brought in Jason Fogg from Expedition. He's gonna tell us all about, let's hear what he has to say. All right, so we're in the studio with Jason Fogg, the chief engineer and general manager of Expedition Archery. And Jason, um, kind of magnesium alloy, that's a new buzzword term in archery. There are some folks working with it. Magnite is the version that Expedition has, and we wanna talk about why it's different and what's unique about it. If we go back a ways, um, most of the bows in the archery industry, if you go late 90s, were all magnesium. Uh, and that particular formulation was called AM60. And that was a die casting version of magnesium that had an aluminum component to it. Uh, we made tons and tons of those die cast, aluminum, uh, die cast magnesium bows for years. Then as it evolved, there became an AZ series and a ZK series. And in these, these were more solid form that you would machine like CNC um, versions. And these started to add in rare earth elements, a little bit of zinc, a little bit of some of these other materials to make them stronger. But in AM60, as well as AZ, as well as ZK, you end up with uh, brittleness due to the porosity that's just inherent in magnesium alloys. So Magnite is a trademark. Um, so a little distinction, there's some super alloys and some Maglite and some other names out there, but as it relates to Expedition, it's Magnite. Magnite. And that's the trademark name, but it is also proprietary in the way it's constructed. Um, so it is magnesium based, it does have aluminum in it, and it has several other versions of rare earth elements that are alloyed together um, to create something that's truly unique. And the unique difference is the ceramic nanoparticles that are added to this matrix. And those ceramic nanoparticles fill in all those gap spaces and allow it to be much more corrosion resistant, also much more vibration dampening, and also very, very consistently um, manufactured. So the properties throughout are always exactly the same. And you had taught, we'd talked before this, and you had mentioned that you had worked with other materials like this before, and you'd said that one of the biggest issues you had was consistency. You could build one that would be perfect, and then the next one would be not perfect. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, you know, magnesium is a fantastic material. It's strong and lightweight, but it's not strong enough for this application. So the alloying component of other things being added to magnesium to make it strong has been 
something that's been tried by aerospace defense and even archery for a long, long time. So it's awesome to be in a position now where we have a material magnite that has these ceramic nanoparticles that have been able to solve some of those inherent problems that just haven't been addressed to this point. And that, what the end result is, is a material that's consistent. So from one bow to the next, you can build multiple bows. They're all gonna have the same consistency. And then as you mentioned, vibration dampening and the corrosion resistance. Correct. With yeah. your processing, you know, this proprietary material, yeah. that's what you get out of that. So you end up with something that's just as strong as 6061 aluminum, um, T6 version of that, but it's 30% lighter. Right. And that's really the advantage. You have the same structural integrity as 6061 aluminum, which is the most commonly used material today in the archery space, but it's just naturally a third lighter because of the construction. All right, Jason, that's what we wanted to hear. That's beyond my technical capabilities, yeah. so we wanted to hear it straight from you. Glad to be here, glad to help you out. All right, so one of the main features of the NXB cam system is gonna be the X-Lock tuning system. Super simple tuning system that does not require a bow press. It's very simple. We're just gonna um, loosen the axle screws a little bit, and then there's gonna be actually pieces, inserts that pop out. They're basically spacers, but they're not spacers where you have to remove the axle. They just bolt onto the back. You pull the spacer off, put a new one in, cam shifts over. Super simple system there that they have. That's the X-Lock tuning system. And again, does not require a bow press. All right, so coming down the bow, we're gonna have a pick mount on the front for your sight. There are the standard threaded holes on the back as well if you've got a traditional sight. We are gonna have the machine dovetail in the riser so you can put on your IMS, your integrated mounting system. And then they do have the um, holes in it for that Hamsky core mount. So if you still have a Hamsky rest that employs the core mount, you'll be able to attach that to the bow as well. All right. Coming down, we do have a pretty standard grip, and I'm gonna talk about that during the shooting experience, so I'm not gonna talk about that now. Then you're gonna have stabilizer bushings, on, one on the front. Uh, you are gonna have a low mount as well, and it's gonna come with a dampener. Uh, Expedition dampener is gonna be in it. You can obviously move that around, and you will have a threaded hole on the back as well for your side rod. There's also a Nexlite 30, which is gonna be a 30 inch axle to axle bow. You're gonna have the same brace height of just under six and a half inches, same draw weights of 50, 60, 65, 70, and 80 pounds. Your draw length total range is gonna be from 24 inches to 30 inches, and the listed weight for the Nexlite 30 is 3.6 pounds. All right, that's what we got, a uh, rundown of the features of the next light. Now let's go to the studio and get our speed test. Three twenty-two five. All right, shot number two. Three twenty-two nine. So. 322 to 323 at a 330 feet per second rating. All right, so shooting the next light 33. So that magnite, you know, one of the um, properties that magnite is supposed to have is reducing vibration. And I will say that uh, I don't feel much in the way of vibration. Um, there is a little bit, I do feel a thump when the string hits. Take another shot here. Yeah, it's quiet, first of all. That's one of the things, this thing is ridiculously quiet. But yeah, I feel the thump um, when it hits. Vibration is very minimal. But the one thing I wanted to talk about, you know, I, I said before about the grip. It's a very thin grip. It's a popular size grip. And one of the distinctions I wanna make, and I told the folks from Expedition, I don't like the grip, but it doesn't affect my shooting. <laughs> so initially when I was shooting this, you know, just inside of 20 yards, um, 
I was like, ah, man, I really don't like the way that grip feels. But as I kept shooting, I was like, yeah, but I keep hitting. I mean, I'm shooting this thing really accurately. So while I don't like the feel of the grip, I can't say that it's a problem because this, one of the things about this bow is the consistency. That's what struck me. Shooting it inside at the Vegas target, just pounding. One, same spot, same spot, same spot. Coming out here, shooting it at distance. Just, it aims really well, but more importantly, wherever my pin is, that's exactly where that arrow's going. There's no inconsistencies like, ah, uh, kicked a little left, kicked a little right. That's what I thought I was gonna get from that grip. I don't get any of that at all. All right, draw cycle for the next light 33. It's smooth in terms of movement. Um, there's no stopping and starting. Oh, so, let me see. It's... So it's kind of, um, you know, I'm used to draw cycles where the maximum effort is right at the beginning or where there's effort and then another peak effort right before the camera is over. This is a little different in that you start to draw and then you hit the peak. But once you get into that motion, the way the cam moves is, is smooth. I wouldn't call it a smooth draw cycle, but the way the cam moves is smooth. Once you get it going, uh, it does move nicely. And you know, this, um, we do have an adjustable draw stop on there, so you can change the uh, let off from 85% to 80 to 75. There's three positions on there. I have it on 80%, and I think what I'm feeling is, and it's 70 pounds, which anymore for me, that's a little bit heavy, because I'm getting old. But I wanna say back there, there's a nice back wall, but I'll say that the, um, I'll say the, the valley, while it's not super deep, it's not shallow either. This isn't a bow that wants to jump forward, um, but it's not a real deep valley. But that could also be because I'm at 80% versus you know other bows where you're going from 90 to 85% to 80. This 80%, this is gonna be a lot um, lower draw, uh, a lot lower let off than some of the other bows that are up 85 or 90 percent but you know that's that's um the draw cycle yeah i'll say once you get the cam moving it is smooth uh, but you can tell this that this has some speed to it uh, because i'll call it like a smooth stiff draw cycle if that makes any sense all right now you can see we've got some snow mix rain falling here. That's not gonna stop us. 80 yard claybird challenge, let's get to it. All right, here we go. 80 yards claybird challenge in the snow, a little bit of snow. I'm gonna say if ever I wanted to shoot the claybird on the first one, this is it. So, I've been wrong a bunch of times about hitting it and a claybird didn't break. I want to go look because I think I'm in the claybird. <laughs> Let's go see. You see that black dot top left corner? Dude, that's in it. Yes! <laughs> I, I was sitting back there thinking, with this crappy weather, I think, like, man, I really want to hit this first time. <laughs> but again, this Claybird holder that we started using, the Claybirds don't break. <laughs> but there it is. Expedition, Next Light 33, brand new bow for us at Lancaster Archery. We haven't carried the Expedition line. First shot, I, I think that might have been our only first shot um, kill on the Claybird this year of all the bows we tested. Perfect day because I don't want to be out here anymore, but we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about Expedition. Next Light 33. Got that new Magnite 
And this kind of confirmed what I had been seeing on the shooting line, shooting this bow. As I said, indoor at 20 yards, what impressed me was just the consistency. I just kept pounding over and over and over. Um, and again, you know, I said, I don't like the grip. 80 yards, that uh, busted clay birds don't lie. Next flight 33. Hey, if you wanna see the expedition uh, Next Light 33 and all the different color configurations and everything we have on our website. Be sure to click the link in the description below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that bell to get notifications whenever we put out new videos. As always, if you have any questions, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.